Four years ago, at the Abraham Fund, we started working with Arab women. This is one of the problematic areas. The percentage of Arab women working in the labor force are make up 20% compared to over 50% in the Jewish sector. Over the past uh, 15 years, this has improved. We were talking about a much lower percentage. So over 15 years, we doubled uh, women's workforce in uh, the uh, Arab sector. The Jewish sector would be the target workplace for these Arab women. It turns out that Employment within the Arab sector is not a viable option. It's too weak to absorb these women. And the placement rates are very high in our project. Practicing medicine is a profession that is not related to defense. That's why many young Arabs want to study medicine. Young Jewish man who has just graduated high school and concluded successfully the three years in the army, then another seven years to study medicine here in Israel, plus another five years. That brings us to age 30 plus with children. This is now a married man with children who is just setting out on his career. So this slot opened up at the faculties of medicine and women and Arabs. The weaker sectors are overrepresented there. That's why more Arabs go study medicine. This report, the OECD Labor Committee, this report explains in English, it's very easy to translate, where we'll be in a decade. Unless the government of Israel realizes that the strategic threat is the social gaps and its derivatives, that's one of the central issues addressed by this panel. <coughs> this blue paper shows that Israel will not be one of the 15 leading economies or even among the 30 leading economies. Now, as for integrating Arab women into the workforce, 20% employment is not good. It's not a good figure. If only half of these 48,000 women will be placed, we're talking about 30 or 40 percent. The implications for the families will be immediate. And there are several other aspects that have to be addressed. This is an economic and social ministry. We have to create jobs, or at least create the infrastructure for jobs. As for the labor market, you spoke of barriers, Muhammad and the fact that we know what they are, that is true. But the main barrier, the main problem, which causes the low participation rate, is that we do not have uh, available jobs for this population. That's the whole problem, full stop. All the other problems, daycare centers, uh, transportation, uh, and so forth, that's, that's true. But the problem is that there, is not, there are no jobs available. If we want to increase participation of Arab women or men who go into the labor market. Take a look at the b Jewish business sector. It has to open its doors to these populations. The business sector, the Jewish business sector, must allow women to integrate in within its walls. So if we want to increase the participation of women and gr university graduates from the Arab population, we need to provide the government with tools that will allow the business sector, the Jewish business sector, to open its doors uh, and uh, and welcome them. What we have been doing in the last few uh, months, or actually last two years, there's a pr plan of 800 million shekels that will be attributed to 13 uh, communities in the Arab sectors and uh, working on those barriers I mentioned, uh, industrial areas, public transportation in the villages, uh, uh, providing training and uh, placement and bringing in investor. I will try to answer the question, what is to be done? And I'm going to mention four possible uh, solutions. I don't pretend to show the entirety of the possible solution, but I'll 
talk about those directions in which we are active and involved firsthand. If you ask me what is the long-term solution, the real solution for the Arab population in Israel, it is education. I tell you this from a personal experience. I'm the chairman of the Western Galilee uh, uh, district, and 39% of our students are Arabs. 72% of the Arab students are women. And that's what I said. The real key is women's education. And these women, we change their lives. Believe you me, we open doors for them that were closed to them before. They go out into the labor market. They get married later. The whole family looks different. And there's nothing that has more impact in the Arab sector. Uh, for instance, if the family is or is not poor, then if they have one or two wages that they perceive each month. So in the long term, the right solution is education. The solution that I offer everyone, not just the Arabs, also Jews, try to become self-employed. Lots of people have the drive, have the knowledge, have the know-how, they have the motivation. You have, they have to be helped to find a relative edge and to see what type of business they can create. And as Portland Trust, we uh, led a project last year which undertook to create 70 businesses in the Galilee. We were supposed to finish with 10 in the first, uh, uh, in the first uh, promotion, and now we have 18. The third point is uh, access to capital. This is also hard in the Jewish sector. If someone wants to open a restaurant and he needs a loan to start his business, whatever it is, a print, uh, printing house, uh, a little, a little uh, bed and breakfast uh, restaurant, he's not going to get a loan because he, don't have, he doesn't have collaterals or uh, credentials and so forth. And we started in Portland uh, Trust and, and Court Fund and Anglia. We uh, undertook to bring about 250 million years in five years. And we last year, we started a new fund. Everything was spent, so we started a new one for the development of the Negev. It works. I'm not going to go into the details, but it works well, very well. We signed uh, an agreement with the with the government with regards to microfinancing and uh, Arab women. It works perfectly. And if you need to get more information, I can give you the information. But uh, uh, capital of, uh, accessibility, that's a very important point. The last point is bar removal of barriers and access to employment. Here, we're not working alone, the Portland Trust. Uh, we are working uh, on TOFIN. TOFIN is an activity that is designed to introduce uh, Arab engineers, graduates of the Tel Aviv University, Ben Gurion University, or the Technion into the labor market and high tech. There's a lot of high tech that is defense related, but not all of the high tech in Israel is defense related. So some of the high tech can be open to Arab uh, students, Arab engineers, and we're doing working on that. We're explaining to them what it means to become part of a high tech society. And then we do work placement and all that. This works all over the country. It starts in Nazareth. We are the biggest financer, but not the only one. And this has been working perfectly for four years. First of all, for us in Northern Ireland, it's absolutely clear that um, inequalities needed to be addressed. And, you know, I acknowledge that the, the situation that faced us in Northern Ireland, facing us in Northern Ireland, has a particular constitutional history, and it's not the same here um, in Israel, and we're a very small part of the world compared to, to here. But, you know, the importance of addressing inequalities, it's not just a moral one, it's not just about fairness, not just about the right to be treated equally, irrespective of the religion you have, or the gender you have, or your disability. It's not just about the right to access the labour market unfettered by discrimination. It's not actually just about economic um, reasons either, although of course it's important that businesses can draw on the talents of a whole country, the whole of the community and not just one part of the community. Um, and, and that you know it can be seen to be an attractive place for investment. But for us in Northern Ireland significantly, working to address inequalities actually helped create and maintain the conditions for the peaceful settlement we had in the 1998 Good Friday Agreement. And of course, there are ongoing challenges politically. And of course, equality remains hotly discussed and sometimes very much as a zero-sum game. So if one side is seen to get more, then inevitably the other side must be getting less. Uh, but gradually growing, there's a recognition that equality and equal society is better for everyone and overall progress um, has been good. My final point is that for us in Northern Ireland, external encouragement, external influence, external monitoring um, has been of exceptional value um, and importance and really a key to progress.